Oh. Gonna grab some piecewise functions. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. Baby, secret fit for you. These are piecewise functions. Yep, you just heard that. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick little piecewise function here for you as a little reminder. Um, we do have three equations here. So what I like to do is I like to rewrite them out as y is equal to an x plus two. We're gonna have another equation at y is equal to two x plus five. And that's a plus five there, not a plus negative. I don't know what the heck that thing is. Plus five. And then we also have an equation y equals negative x plus one. So now for each three, all three of these, we're gonna have to write any, or draw any, uh, a table. So if we make a table for the first one, remember you always must include the a value that's given to you. So for x plus two, it says x has to be less than zero. Well, we're gonna include zero <coughs> as our first point. We also need to include a number that is less than zero. So that would be, I don't know, negative one? That sounds good. So let's plug x in for our equation. So zero plus two gives us a two, and we're gonna plot zero, two. That would be at this point. Now, is this gonna be open or closed? Well, according to your inequality sign, that does not have an equal to underneath, so this is gonna be an open circle. Now our next value is gonna be at x equals negative one, so we're gonna say negative one plus two is a one. So we're gonna to go to the left one, up one, and put a dot. And notice our line is going down and to the left. So you could plug in more points if you want, but this should just keep following a nice pretty little straight line going out this way. So there's that straight line. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to graph our middle function. And let's do this one in, uh, let's do it in green here. So make a table of two values here. The good thing about the middle function is that it was given two values. So we're gonna have a zero. And we're also gonna plug in a two into our equation. And notice these are all equal to, so our circles are gonna be colored in. So if I plug a zero in for x, two times zero is zero plus five gives us five. So I'm gonna go left and right zero, up five. Dot, and colored in, colored in circle. And then we're gonna plug a two in. Two times two is four, plus five gives you a nine. So we go to the right two, up nine. There's another colored in circle. And we're only gonna connect these two points because we can't go any bigger than two. So we don't wanna go any further out past that point. The last one we're gonna graph is gonna be your y is equal to a negative x plus one. And we are given a point right here. We are given a point. So we're gonna start with two for our x and then we also need to plug in a number that is an x value that's larger than two. So how about, I don't know, three. So let's plug these in. A negative two, because we're gonna plug in a negative, or a positive value, then it becomes negative. Negative two plus one gives us a negative one. So we go over two, down one. Now this is gonna be an open circle because our inequality is not equal to. Plug a three in, you get a negative three plus one, which will give us a negative two. So I'm gonna go over three, down two. And then this line is gonna be going down and to the right and it keeps having this nice little slope right here. So there's your graph. Um, we might as well get a little extra excited here and maybe write out our domain and our range. So I am gonna use um, interval notation because our domain, <clears throat> if we look how far this pink graph goes to the left, well it goes all the way to the negative infinity so we know that's gonna be the smallest value it has. But it keeps going to the right, keeps going to the right, keeps going to the right, and we stop, this pink graph stops at zero, x equals zero. Well, it picks up again on green, green graph, and we go to x equals one, x equals two. Now we're gonna jump down to the purple graph, and notice your x values keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this graph, even though it has some breaks, it never has any spaces 
open in your x value. So we're going to go from negative infinity to infinity, or some of you might be a little more apt to say all real numbers, but this interval notation will be better, trust me, eventually. Um, so let's do our range. Now your range is going to be a little bit more difficult, and this is where interval notation will really be helpful. Um, the lowest this graph goes, it's going down, it's going down, it goes to negative infinity. However, the problem is this purple graph goes up and it stops at y equals negative 1. Well, that's okay because going up, your, y, your pink graph goes, starts at negative 1, keeps going up to y equals 0, y equals 1, y equals 2, does not include 2. But notice there is also a break in your graph. So we go from negative infinity to 2. However, we're not going to include 2 because it's an open circle, y equals 2. So we put a parenthesis. Now we also have y values from 5 up to 9. So we put a little u here, and we're going to include 5. That's the smallest for the green. That's the smallest number we have. So we are going to include 5, which means you need to put a bracket. And that graph goes all the way up to 9. So there is your domain and your range. So remember, for tomorrow, you only have to know how to graph, but this is a good way for you to uh, view and remember how to graph this fun stuff. So I hope you uh, enjoyed my little video on graphing uh, piecewise functions. And if you have any questions, make sure you come in for extra help. Baby, let's just graph it.